Hi, my name is Karen O'Bannon. Welcome to Kingdom Kids. Today we're going to be talking to some young authors about a book that they have just done as a um, anthology and the book is called Game Changers. So um, let's begin. You ready? So these are my guests. Um, this is Edward, Anaya, and Mackenzie. How y'all doing? Good. 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 Okay. Um, the first question I'd like to ask is, where did you guys get the idea to write the book? Um, well, there is a program that we were invited at our elementary school. Okay. Okay. Um, so do you all go to the same school? Um, not, not right now. Not anymore. Not anymore? Oh, but you did? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Um, there's seven of you in the book, because I understand this is an anthology, correct? Okay, and um, the three of you are here. I hope to be able to um, meet the other four sometime. And you all write on different subjects. So what's your subject, Edward? My subject is how there are food deserts around the world and how some black people don't have access to healthy foods such as salads and other vegetables and fruits. Okay, it so happens that not long ago, um, Kroger did a big promotion and they were offering um, free, free food, uh, fruit and vegetables to different people in the neighborhoods. And uh, the reason that they were doing that was because they wanted to promote the idea of everyone having access to good food. So, um, what do you think about that? I think that when Kroger did that little thing that they did, I think it actually helped the neighborhood around us because at some point we didn't really have all of that, all of those good things to have in our neighborhood, like salads and all that kind of stuff. And since Kroger did that, they had a little bit more and they could share it and make it affordable with the rest of the black neighborhood. Okay, um, so where do you think that, um, that the food industry needs to go as far as being able to help other people get good foods in their neighborhoods? I think that they should start making food more affordable because if in black neighborhoods they only have like sweets and all that kind of stuff, they won't have they won't have healthy food to just eat instead of sweets and all that other kind of stuff. Okay, and we do know that um, sometimes it's it's cheaper to eat food that's not as healthy as it is to eat nourishment kinds of food, so um, hopefully you'll be a game changer and you'll help us come up with the right ideas about how to solve that problem. Ariana, so um, we just passed the 2020 Olympics and uh, Simone Biles was, who is a very, very good um, gymnast, um, had, she had a struggle with her mental health and she had to back out of some of her events. And so um, she got some backlash, but she also brought a lot of attention to the subject of mental health. So how do you feel about mental health? Like I said, mental health is a very serious topic that can make a person suicidal or come up with many disorders. As in new times, since there has been more technology and more research about mental health, it should not be one to play on. If we have found more topics about it, then we should be able to diagnose more people as usually in the U.S. there is about 800,000 million like suicidals a year mm. and half of it is majority is kids my age, 11 through like 16 for many different reasons that cannot be either solved or has not been talked about yet. So as we begin to find more research about it, we should be able to open up more news about it. 
That's an interesting statistic that you mentioned um, involving kids. Um, do you know if there's anything in the school system that um, protects the kids or a place that they can go in order to get help if they have problems at school? I mean, uh, maybe a counselor, but yet your secret's not always safe with anybody. As I, it's hard for me to already trust people, so I can't keep certain secrets with other people. So you don't, like you can talk to them, it can make you feel better, but you don't know if they're gonna tell your parents or tell somebody else about it unless you really trust them or really just wanna open up about it and get off your chest, which lots of kids do not do now because of what's already happened, like, and stuff, which can make you, like, no kid wants to go to an asylum because all of the scary stories, which some are fake, but some are also real, and nobody wants to talk about that as it's not a very nice and opening topic to talk about with certain people because you never know what they're going to do with that topic. Would you like to see more counselors in the... Um school system? I would, but I would wish they would be at least trained, like most therapists at least, mm -hmm. so it can be a little better situation about it, because like I said, you never know what somebody's going to do. Right, right. Um, so Mackenzie, how you doing? I'm doing great. Good. Okay, um, you want to be a writer and a publisher? Yes. Okay, um, as a fellow author, I applaud you for, actually I applaud all of you for even wanting to do this because writing takes a lot of discipline and um, focus. So can you tell me why you like to write? I like to write because I get to like pour out my uh, imagination and interest and create my own story. What kind and of books interest you? I like action, I like biography, I like history, and uh, their fantasies. Okay, so you like everything. <laughs> <laughs> you also want to be a publisher? Yes. Can you tell me um, why you want to publish other people's work? I would like to publish other people's work because I will get to share what I would like and maybe my opinions to the world. Okay, okay. Well, I know that, you know, some of the reasons why people like to write is um, because it adds credibility to, you know, whatever kind of subject you're interested in doing. Um, it can make you um, an expert in your field if you know a lot about it. And um, sometimes it's good to just get things on paper, you know, so. Um, good job. I'm glad to hear that, uh, that you're, you're writing. Okay, so how long did it take you guys to put the Game Changers book together? As a matter of fact, that's an interesting title. Um, I told your publisher that I, I really like your cover. I really like your cover and I like the, um, the layout of the, the whole idea of Game Changer because it says to me that um, not only did you want to write about something, but you're actually thinking about what you want to do about what you're writing about. And um, I think that's great, especially being that you're young people. So tell me, how long did it take you to write your, your part of the book? My part of the book took about, I would say three days, just to like come up with what I wanted to write about. And once I came up with what I wanted to write about, I wrote about it and I didn't edit it correctly, so I had to edit it again, and it was a very long process, so I'm just glad it ended up being good enough. Well, the editing can be the hardest part. How long did it take you to write yours? To get the idea, it took me about five days, and to do research and start writing about it, it took me about two to three days. You all are some fast writers. How long did it take you? Well, so it took me like five days to like take some research, to think about it, 
and then to like actually start the process and keep on editing it mm -hmm. I would say it took me a couple of weeks because I had like incorrect grammar and I maybe need to edit a lot more things okay. and add in stuff. Do any of you have any other works or um, is this your first writing experience? You written anything else? I mean first grade we made a little dinosaur book. Okay. <laughs> I am writing another story. Okay. So I guess we'll see where that goes. What about you? I am writing another book and I do not know the name yet, but I am writing writing another book and it's halfway finished. We just have to find a publisher. Okay. Okay. And how about you? Uh this is my first time and I really enjoyed it and I would like to do this again. Okay. Well I love the thought of um anthologies because they um give you an opportunity to kind of put your foot in the water and, and test it. They're short, so they don't take as long to write as a full book would take. But um, it's really good practice, and I'm, I'm very proud of all of you. It's, it's great what you're doing. Well, we're, we're going to be right back to talk to your publisher. And so um, I thank you all for being my guest today, and I hope that um, you have great success with your book, OK? It's called Game Changers. and um, it's going to be out by the, well, by the time this is aired, it, it'll be out. So um, I'm getting a copy, and I'm going to tell other people to support your work and keep writing, okay? Be sure to join us on the next Kingdom Kids, where we'll be getting some next level advice from some middle schoolers and helping out our elementary kingdom. What to do, what to get ready for, what type of secrets do we have? leading us to middle school. So be sure to tune in to the next Kingdom Kids and always wear your crown. Welcome back. I'm being joined by Julia Royston of BK Royston Publishing. She is uh, the company behind this wonderful book, Game Changers, by our young people. And um, I thought it would be good to have her on the show so that she could talk to you about the publishing side, just in case any of you out there might be interested in writing a book. So, Miss Julia, how you doing? I'm doing great, how are you? Doing good. Good, good. I've got a disclaimer. Uh, Julia and I know each other already before this book. And uh, we're both authors. So, um, tell me about um, your publishing company. What made you decide to get started and how are things going? Oh my goodness. So I really only started my company for me. Um, uh, I'm be before Tyler Perry, before anybody else, I, I have control issues. Hi, my name is Julia Orson, <laughs> and I have control <laughs> issues. So I established the publishing company for myself until 2000 and in 2008. In 2009, I had someone come to me and say they were going to pay me to publish. So now, fast forward. Uh, it is 350 books later, 250 authors later, and I've written 66 books myself. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we've, we've been doing it and been on our grind since 2008. I know when I met you, you already had about three or four books behind you. Yeah. Your, your um, credit. So um, I happen to know that, um, that uh, Royston Publishing is, is doing very, very well. Thank so, you. Um, tell me um, about some of your experiences with your book writing uh, authors. Well, um, it has really been a, a great experience. Um, BK Royston Publishing is a faith-based, family-friendly, full-service publishing company. So we do everything from the writing, getting it from your head, and what I say to your head, from your head to Amazon. So mm -hmm. we're full service and everything in between. So I meet authors that are 
in every part of the process. Some of them know they want to write a book, don't even know what they want to write about. Some people have the book half started, half written, half and not completed. Some people do come to me with everything fully done and say, I want you to be my publisher. So that's, um, that's kind of my uh, writing journey, but I love the process too. I'm a retired teacher librarian. So um, 30 years in librarianship, I've been a fr surrounded by books the, my entire life. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, as they say, I'm living my best life. Okay. <laughs> From your observation, would you say that um, there's any difference between young authors and uh, adult authors? Uh, in all actuality, no. Um, when you, the writing process is is uh, creative, it's sometimes isolating. It's sometimes a great when you're in a group, and all the struggle struggles that the young authors experience, the adult authors experience it even even more. And I think the adults uh, struggle with writing even more than young adults do, and young people do, which is shocking enough. You know, you think adult you now some people have held onto the story for 20 years and too afraid to release it, too afraid to for anybody else to read it. So um, I'll help anyone, but um, the next generation, I really want to pour into and uh, impart what I know. I have no biological children of my own, so the children I've taught for 22 years and these young authors is my legacy to the next generation. Amen. So what would you say um, is uh, the most troubling part of uh, an author's um, path in the writing process, would you um, attribute it to the cost of being self-published or the anxiety of will people like my book or um, just getting the words on the paper? Uh, probably uh, really the fear of releasing it and, and not being accepted because I've had people in various, you know, I am a for-profit company, so uh, people do pay me to help them walk them through the publishing process. People pay if they go through the self-publishing process, even in the traditional publishing process, uh, which we don't have time today to go through, but you're gonna pay one way or the other, mm -hmm. either in time, even if you don't pay in money. So the fear of the rejection is probably the greatest part of the process that I struggle with the most because people can save for it, they can borrow for it. Uh, I had someone have somebody else invest in their publishing process. So that's not the hardest. Some people think that's the hardest, but it's not. The hardest part is being willing to uh, release your message to the world so everyone can hear it and everybody can receive it. And then 66 books that I've written, everyone, I'm holding my breath. Did you like it? Did you like it? <laughs> and that's probably the most difficult part. I know that feeling. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, would you say that, um, well, how expensive is it to be a self-publisher? To be a self-publisher? No, I'm an independent publisher. So to self-publish, um, you have to do everything yourself. So that means you have to find your editor, you have to find someone to do your cover, you have to find somebody to format it and lay it out. So it just all depends on what you're willing to invest. Uh, an independent publisher such as I am, um, it can be a package all into itself or it can be a la carte. I normally don't give prices because I feel like each book is a baby. So what it took for Game Changers and what it takes for um, a 300 page uh, novel are two different things. So I have to see it and then I'll be happy to give you a pricing, but I have to see it first. Yeah. Well, I wasn't expecting you to give any prices. <laughs> anyway, I was just really asking for the benefit of a person who was writing their first book, right? wanted to, um, to kind of figure if it would be something they would be able to complete and, um, and, you know, how expensive it might be you know would it be something that you would need to save for can you do it like inch by inch or right well I've, I've seen it from one end to the next i've seen the inch by inch and as they say a hundred dollars a month till you pay it off or i've seen people put down the whole entire thing it just all depends to me it goes back to your why the why of your message the why of you wanting to writing to write it, period, the love of the story, the love of the message. Some people are writing for entertainment uh, purposes, such as fiction and romance fiction. Other people have a message uh, such as mental health, 
uh, which Ariana uh, mentioned earlier, um, social justice for the love of writing, the literary uh, industry itself, such as Mackenzie said, and uh, Edward's gonna turn the world upside down with making sure we all have the food supply that we need as well as um, uh, um, fighting social injustice. So those types of messages to me are not about the money. To me, it's about the message itself. And so I can usually tell that when I interview an author, how connected and how much they love it. Just listening to Ariana, you know, mental health is, is a serious thing. And she says all counselors should be therapists. Well, some are and some are not. And so that that is really a strong message for her and something that she'd probably go find the money to, to publish mm -hmm. if she was writing a book on counselors need to be therapists too. You know, it's those kinds of messages that it's not the funding, it's so much the message itself and transforming someone else's life. Okay, and speaking of messages, um, would you say that it's better for an author to write from their heart about you know whatever their passion seems to be, or would you say that um, they should look for the books that are selling? You know, that that is a tough one because I have seen people uh, write books that I didn't really think were going to be, you know, they weren't on the bestseller. These are the hot topics. These are the biggest things trending. And they turned it upside down because they were passionate and associated with the message. Mm -hmm. So um, <coughs> me, I, I do both. I write what I'm passionate about. I also write what I'm called to do because there's sometimes God says, I want you to write this thing and write these things and publish this book and I don't have an audience for it and I don't know why and I don't find out until much later. And then there are times where um, uh, right now the hottest topic is African-American children's books. Anything with diversity and equity and inclusion is hot, is really hot right now. So I'm, I'm on the children's book uh, bandwagon right now just because there's a high demand for it. So I, I kind of cover all bases, but I still write what I love to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in a few words, could you tell us uh, what the, pro the writing process involves? For this book or for period? In general. Um, really, um, for me, there are three main questions that I really ask people. Who do you want to talk to? What do you want to talk about? And what format do you want to speak in? And then we break it down from there. Hopefully, they're, it's associated with their passion, um, their profession, uh, if necessary. Some people write and it's not necessarily their profession. Uh, and then hopefully it's um, their passion, their purpose, and their profession. So hopefully it's something near and dear to your heart. After that, we can break it down into chapters, sub -chop topics, sub chapters, and then write in, uh, straight from there. Yeah. But it's who you want to talk to, who do you want to talk to, because it'll base it on how you speak. Because if you're writing a children's book, same subject of bullying is totally different than an adult book on, uh, on bully bullying or the Me Too generation. Okay, so if a person wanted to write a book uh, right now, they've been thinking about it, they um, have decided I'm going to do it, they mm -hmm. kind of know what they want to write about, what advice would you give them? Just write. Start writing. Just write. Just write. Just start writing. Um, because we can't edit what we don't have. We, c we can't, just like these young people know, we couldn't. I couldn't take it over from the writing because we did have a separate writing workshop and then we went into the, I get the publishing work, but I can't publish in nothing, you know, mm -hmm. out of the air. I can publish what I write, but I, if somebody's going to give it to me, I have to have a manuscript. So just write. The editors can make the tweaks and the grammatical changes. Uh, we can format it. We can, we, we can make all types of adjustments. Technology is brilliant at that, but I can't write the invisible. So, unless you're going to pay me to ghostwrite, then that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but otherwise, just write. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on the Kingdom Kids thank show. You. I've enjoyed having you here. I'm very proud of you, first of all, for um, being true to your trade. Because, as I said, you know, Julia and I met each other in the writing process, mm -hmm. and she's been writing ever since. Mm -hmm. I've kind of drifted off into other things, <laughs> but she's been steadfast <laughs> writing those books <laughs> and publishing. So, uh, kudos to you, and Thank also you. to the Game Changers book. I really like the idea very much of kids, you know, um, 
putting their thoughts on paper, and I, I hope that they do a lot more of it. Most definitely. So, um, until next week, uh, this is uh, Karen O'Bannon with Kingdom Kids on SSC Live. And remember, you're a Kingdom Kid, so wear your crown.